Wow, man, Ableton have really been cooking lately with these updates. They just released a new public beta version, Live 12.2, and it's another killer update. And of course, it's free if you own Live 12, and it's full of incredibly useful additions. And Push is getting some cool improvements as well. And also, there is a new effect device that is coming to Ableton Move. So let's do an overview of the most important new additions and the best one has to do with making chord progressions, but we're gonna be starting with Bounce to New Track. So with Live 12.2, you can bounce clips or time selections on any MIDI or audio track, including all the processing of that track to a new audio track with just a few clicks, or you can use the Bounce track in place to convert the whole track to audio. And this replaces the freeze and flatten option and it's great for making quick edits to your MIDI parts. So for example, with this piano track, I can just select this part, right click and choose bounce to new track. So I have this part bounced to an audio clip and I can just quickly reverse it, stretch it and just make a cool transition really quickly. So it's a really meaningful addition, making it easier to add variety to your tracks and keep the listeners engaged with some ear candy here and there. And I know people have been asking for bounce in place, like in some other DAWs where the MIDI and audio stay on the same track. But honestly, this is good enough for me. It's an awesome feature and I'm very happy to have it in this free update. So the next one is my favorite and most used effects device in life, the auto filter, which has been completely overhauled in 12.2, adding filter types like vowel, which adds a human voice-like quality to whatever you're filtering. DJ, which is basically low pass and high pass that you control with a single knob. A comb filter for this flanger-like sound. We also have the resampling filter, which is essentially a sample rate reducer. Kind of similar to Redux, but the fact that you can control it with the built-in LFO and envelope is kind of cool. And also a morphing filter, which can morph between different types of filters. There's also the revamped modulation section that lets you shape sounds with greater precision. They've also added a dry wet control, soft clipping and also a real-time visualization of your modulation so you can see the filter curve moving according to the LFO or envelope modulation that you've set. So in the beginning I mentioned that Ableton's portable Groovebox Move will get a new effect device and this is the one. Auto filter will be added to Move and it's also going to be on Ableton's iOS app Note. Okay, so here is another big one. With the release of Live 12, Ableton updated the chord MIDI effect with a lot of new options, which was nice, it was cool, but it was still lacking proper chord sets that would make creating chords easy for everyone. So with this update, we have a brand new Max for Life MIDI effect that adds these chord sets. And even though it's a Max for Life device, it will be available for live intro and standard as well. So the device is called Expressive Chords and the expressive part refers to the fact that it's an MPE enabled device and it comes with eight pre-made chord sets, which lets you play complex harmonies with just a single key or pad. But there's a lot more to it. You can add strum and switch between different articulations for the chords so they can sound quite natural and human and not just simple block chords. And you can also play the chords with different inversions and even tilt the velocity to emphasize lower 
or higher notes in the chord. And of course, you can also create your own chord sets with MIDI clips and import them. And this is done when you unfold this section here with the fold out. And so here in the fold out of the device, you can customize how the controls behave. So you can, for example, control the tilt, inversion, strum and articulation with the mod wheel or slide or velocity. And there is also the articulation editor where you can essentially customize the different articulations of the strum. And you can also switch between pad and keyboard view. And the pad view is also mirrored on push where you can play the notes with the white pads and with these colored pads up here, you can switch between different articulations. And of course, push standalone gets this device as well. Man, this is so cool. I can finally play real chord progressions on push. I'm super happy. Many push users will be delighted that the 16 pitches feature that was introduced on Ableton Move is now available on push. And as you can see, I don't even have a push three, but guess what? It works on push two as well. So you just select a pad on the drum rack and with the layout button, you switch to 16 pitches mode and you can play that pad chromatically. But it will also respect the scale that you've set, so you don't even need to use chromatic mode. If you are in the in-key mode, it will be in the scale that you've set. So here, yeah, pretty cool, you can change the octaves with the octave button. And you can even sequence these 16 pitches with the step sequencer. And yes, it does work with chopped samples in Simpler as well. So a big complaint for Push 3 was the lack of song mode or arrangement capabilities. And now you can use follow actions to structure songs, perform sets, and just have more flexible ways to sequence clips and scenes. The full functionality I think is not available on Push 2, so I can't show it right now, but this feature is definitely most useful for Push 3 standalone users. So you can have clips and scenes that play automatically one after another, and you can set up how this behaves in detail in the clip view of Push 3. And follow actions has been available in live session view for as long as I remember, but now it's on Push as well. But really guys, this is a huge update. There's so much more to it. And a lot of these additions can be whole videos by themselves. So there is no way I'm going through everything in detail in this video. But let me know down in the comments if you're interested in deep dives on some of these new features. But just to mention a few things, there's a new automation and modulation keyboard workflow letting you add edit and delete automation breakpoints with the keyboard. The browser has been redesigned yet again to better accommodate the recently added filtering and tagging features. And you can even have these cool custom icons that you can add to any of these categories in the library or even to folders that you've added to places. There's also new additions to the melt synth and the rower effect and also effect devices like like resonators and spectral resonator that can generate tones now support scale awareness, making it easier to make them sync in the key of your song. But yeah, man, it's a bit of an overwhelming update. So much new stuff. I'll put a link in the video description down below for everyone who wants to catch up on all the new stuff. And since this is a public beta, you can also start using it right away. I don't know when exactly it will be released officially. And as with any beta version, you should probably not use it for any critical work just to be safe. Man, you know, I still remember how people were complaining about Ableton charging money for the Life 12 update, but since then we've had a major update in the summer and we're about to have another major one and they're of course free. Uh, well, included in the price is more accurate as you're essentially financing these updates in advance. And I must say so far it was money well spent. Great job Ableton, I'm super happy with what you've done here. And as for you who are still watching so far into the video, share your thoughts down in the comments, I do read all of them. Support the channel by hitting the like button or subscribing if you are new here. 
And if you want to take your support a bit further, grab some of my packs from the link down in the video description. I will be dropping an Ableton Move version of the Driftwave pack probably next week, so stay tuned for that. And thank you so much for being here. I really appreciate it and I will catch you later.